Well, I think one question that Color Purple raises certainly is, is there contemporary slavery? Not just in the South, maybe everywhere. In the 20th century, Ray Don Chong. What about that? Your characters squeak. Mm -hmm. Others as well. They are slaves, aren't what they? What do you mean? I mean, we're all slaves. Yeah. I mean, we have to serve somebody. But what do you mean in... in, in uh, slaves in the South after the Civil War, mm -hmm. at a time in which, although they live on their own land, nonetheless, they still are working for a situation that is extremely poor. There still is a white man grinding them down under their heel in the town. Situations such as this, your character Squeak, what, a prostitute, a dance hall singer? She could be either. Her options seem to be limited. I've asked about four questions all at once, I guess. I know, I'm a little <laughs> overwhelmed. Why don't we start all over with this? I think all right. <laughs> um, I thought Cut the question about contemporary slavery was sort of clear, but we'll try it again. Okay. <laughs> Living in the Deep South after the turn of the century meant limitations were few. Uh, options were few for blacks in the Deep South. The color purple seems to make that clear. Any comments on that kind of situation in your own sense of life for blacks, maybe earlier in this century? Was it a situation as limited as that book tells us in the film? I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty true. Yeah. If anything, maybe the book was even, um, it was less focused on that. I think there's, I personally am a little tired of uh, when they dwell so much on the negative mm -hmm. of, um, racism because I think it's sort of now doing a reverse thing. There's so much guilt about it that uh, it still is maintained. Racism is maintained because of the guilt because now it's, oh, it's too late and you're still, you know, oh. they're still inferior. So we got to still treat people like this if they're not white or whatever. And um, well, if contemporary audiences see color purple, are they likely then to think things are being exaggerated? in the film. Is that a danger on their part to think that way? I don't know. You know, that those are these are pretty heavy questions. I don't know. I think I would hope that it would enlighten people um, to just the humanness of, of all of us, regardless of your skin mm -hmm. color. I mean I would hate to think that I'm different than you just because I have darker skin. You see, underneath the skin there's muscle tissue and, and the basic, you know, structure biologically is probably similar. I mean, I'm, just, I'm certain my muscles aren't brown. Do you know what I mean? But so I think people, I mean, that's an important reality. I do think that's important. So I hope that the color purple, because of the story, because of the humanness of the story, the, the um, we'll just say the, the common thing that, that it is, it's like a drama about a family or a bunch of families. I would hope translate beyond skin color. In the book, oddly enough, it makes it clear that in Africa, your skin color would be regarded as albino. Yeah, well, and also, even in America, my skin color of the character Squeak is, is very low. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned something about her being a prostitute. I think the one thing wonderful, at least in my head, was, was Squeak, was that she didn't pick that, because that, you're right, that's what, what she probably would have been. But she didn't, she, was, um, she worked in the juke joint but she was with she was with Harpo, and she aspired to be more than than what was left in life, which would be either a maid or a prostitute. You see, there were not very many choices. And there's a singing career that I would have liked to have seen more of. Yeah, well, me too. <laughs> uh, would you like to talk about that? Because every actor has to face the possibility of scenes being cut, ending up on the cutting room floor, or being excised from the script. Great scenes end up on the cutting room floor. Okay. Great, great scenes. In fact, it's a dream. Um, you know, you get to be so big, like some stars, and then they are in the, you don't, it doesn't surprise me now that they're in the cutting room, because a scene will get cut because the editor, see the editor is the last person um, that gets it. Mm -hmm. And an editor, I think, will, will pick a scene, not because the drama content is the best, but because, boy, is it going to cut so good into this tire of yes. something, you know, or a the road. Thing takes yeah, over. and it's terrible. I, I'm getting really mm -hmm. frustrated. And, mm -hmm. and I don't mean, and I'm not talking about this film in particular, I'm talking about the whole industry. And I think technically it sort of sterilizes a lot of films that have the potential to be real good. Is this clear? Yeah, I love it. And uh, I'd like to digress just for a second, too, in that if the options of black characters in the book and film are few, Yours, as an actress, are incredible. The humor you brought to Commando, mm -hmm. the pathos you brought to Choose Me, which is one of my favorite movies of last year, uh, show quite a range. Do you mm -hmm. like to keep it that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, I do. I struggle. Um, I mean, you practically stole Commando, might I suggest. Well, I, well, I hope so. <laughs> that was the intent, you know. I mean, I felt so bad for the poor woman in Rambo because she's a friend of mine. and mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
I mean, that was obviously someone else's movie, and so I thought, oh boy, I better get those muscles flexing, and I don't mean my real muscles, <laughs> but um, I go for it, I go for it, because it makes my life interesting, it makes my job interesting, and um, I mean, otherwise, why do it, you know? It's, it becomes unfun. The name Chong, of course, resonates with so many viewers, and that's an honest reaction. The name Chong, tell us about your dad. My father, he's the best thing in the world. Um, it's funny, too, because I'm, I'm just getting to know more sides of him as I get older. He's special, you know, he's, a, he's just so special, and I'm fortunate. I think he's very talented. I think he's the funniest man in the world, and, and he's my dad. Yeah. He's handsome. And <laughs> what does he say to a daughter when he's used to saying to a partner, yeah, man, hey, man, is there a female equivalent to uh, what that? What does he call it? He calls me, um, <laughs> he, when he likes me, it's Ray Donnie, and when he's mad at me, it's Ray Don. So that <laughs> that's what he says to me, yes. Are they going to make some more comedies? Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Mm, okay. Relay the question. In the meantime, are you going to make more films that continue this wide range of Do characters? Do you think I should? What's the wildest thing you've got coming out? The wildest thing I've yeah. got coming out? Um, I don't have anything wild coming out. I'm, I'm, I'm yet to embark. See, it's a new year. And if you've noticed, my last year was pretty, pretty busy. And I never really know till you know, it's the end of the year. So I think 86 is going to have a few wonderful things in store. I've learned so much in 85 as an actress. So I think 86 is just going to get better. Would you do something for me and issue a personalized, engraved invitation to our viewers? Look right into that camera and invite them to see Color Purple. Please come and see the Color Purple. I think it will enhance one's Christmas enormously. Thank you. It is a wonderful gift for all of us. Ray Don Chong in The Color Purple, directed by Steven Spielberg. From New York City for KCTV5, I'm John Tibbetts. All right. Okay. Sorry to open it so heavily. I That's guess right. I didn't realize. So you just cut my hat off. I was going to.